Hi, this is Kim Newlove, host of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. This is episode 134, and you can find the show notes with links to anything mentioned today on my website, thepharmacistvoice.com. Today's episode kicks off a monthly feature that I plan to publish with a focus on drug name pronunciations. Future pronunciation episodes will be brief. However, this first one is longer. Let's start with a story. It's fall semester 1997. I'm in my apartment, sitting on my couch with my then boyfriend, now husband, Nathan. We're both studying. I'm 19 years old, just starting my second year of pharmacy school and coloring a page in my anatomy coloring book for my functional anatomy and pathophysiology class. Nathan, on the other hand, is 22 years old and studying something for his mechanical engineering degree. He needs a break, looks over to see what I'm up to, and reads a word from the page that I'm on. Sternocleidomastodon, he says, instead of sternocleidomastoid. I ask him to try it again, but he really can't. (laughs) He laughed it off and told me that His way sounded like the name of a cool new dinosaur, which made me laugh. Mission accomplished. He was trying to distract me. (laughs) Eventually, he let me teach him how to say it, but you get the picture. I was busy and stressed, and he helped me take a break and have a laugh. After all, laughter is the best medicine, isn't it? But once he got me laughing, he wanted to do it again. So he took the book off my lap looked through it, and found something else to pronounce badly to make me laugh again. Gastrocnemesis, he said, instead of gastrocnemius. Same thing. He made something up to make me laugh. Of course, he liked his pronunciation better because it sounded like a transformer. Then he talked about whether the gastrocnemesis would be an autobot or a Decepticon, and if it would be a monster truck or a sports car. I said something like, um, a gastroc nemesis sounds more like a Decepticon to me. What do you think? I went down the rabbit hole with him, had a good laugh, and I thoroughly enjoyed my study break. To this day, he still pronounces stuff wrong just to make me laugh. I love that guy. Can you relate? Have you ever read a journal article or seen a social media post about drug mispronunciations? For example, there is an amusing uh, journal article from a few years ago from Pharmacy Times. That I will put in the show notes. Plus, I found a good one on Twitter about omeprazole not too long ago. Links to both of those are in the show notes. Here's some examples of ones that I have actually heard omeprazole instead of omeprazole, and victrola instead of victoza. Some mispronunciations are just funny, and it's okay to have a laugh. What isn't funny is when mispronouncing drug names leads to safety issues or delayed patient access to treatment. What community pharmacist hasn't listened to a voicemail from a prescriber's office after the end of their business day with a mispronunciation and then had to clarify it the next morning. The patient can't get their medication right away. They come to you, and then you, the pharmacist, becomes the bad guy. That sucks. Prescribers and their staff are not the only ones to mispronounce drug names. Patients do it too. What happens when they're in the emergency department and they don't have their med list? How many times have you had to help a family member or an emergency department staffer sort out the patient's med list because the patient doesn't know how to say or spell any of their drug names? I've been in practice more than 20 years, and it's happened to me more times than I can count. This is a patient safety issue. What if the pharmacy had been closed? These things happen. But as pharmacists, We, too, struggle to pronounce some drug names. What do you do when you come across a drug name that you don't know how to pronounce? It happens. During my 20 years as an Ohio pharmacist, I have seen drug names for the first time, said them as best I could, wrote them down, 
and promised myself that I would look them up later, only to forget and find myself in the same situation again and again. When I come across a drug name that I've never seen or heard of, I either have to guess at the pronunciation or research it. No one is paying me to say drug names wrong, so my guessing days are pretty much over. Once I became a voice actor, I had to get serious about drug name pronunciations. Learning new drug names can be frustrating, but I need to get the pronunciations right and sound confident saying them. Where do you find the right drug name pronunciations anyway? I find generic drug name pronunciations in the USP Dictionary of United States Adopted Names and International Drug Names. It's a long title. I just call it the USP Dictionary Online. There are no brand name drug pronunciations in the USP Dictionary Online, so what I do is, for brand name drugs, I use the intended pronunciations from the brand name drug sponsors. If you're interested in learning more about drug name pronunciations, I want you to visit kimnewlove.com and sign up for my online course, Pronounce Drug Names Like a Pro. It's a great way to learn all the little hacks that I've learned over the years about how to pronounce generic and brand name drugs. I'm just giving you some backstory before I start publishing episodes about drug name pronunciations on a regular basis. I hope to publish one a month and get right to the point during those future episodes. What's my goal? My goal is to provide one brand name drug and one generic drug pronunciation per month. You may have heard me mention my intention to do this in episode 132. If you want to suggest a drug name that you struggle with, leave me a message through my contact page on my website, thepharmacistvoice.com. I might even use your suggestion in an upcoming episode. In my online course, there are visuals, and I provide a number of strategies for breaking down drug names and learning them. Since this podcast is audio only for now, I'll keep it basic. One of these days, I would love to do some YouTube episodes. If you're a pharmacist, you probably know that pharmacists can typically hear a drug name pronounced once and then immediately be able to use it correctly. So what I'm going to do is say the drug name, break it down into syllables, explain which syllable or syllables have the emphasis, and then put the written pronunciation in the show notes so that you can see how the drug name is broken down into syllables and put it into use right away. I plan to share some other strategies in upcoming episodes, too. Some people learn better by seeing. Others learn better by listening. Still others learn better by doing or teaching. Whatever works for you, I hope this podcast episode helps. Our two drug names for today are Esopiclone and Culipta. Esopiclone is generic for Lunesta, and Culipta is a prescription medication used for the preventative treatment of episodic migraine in adults. There are four syllables in Esopiclone. The emphasis is on the second syllable, zo. One more time, Esopiclone. The hardest part of this drug name for me is visually seeing the S and the Z from Esopiclone together. If you need to say this drug name for a presentation and you're worried about getting tripped up, I suggest you just chop it up into the syllables and capitalize the syllable with the emphasis, which, again, is zo. I'll put the breakdown of the syllables in the show notes. The good news is that Esopiclone is pretty straightforward to pronounce compared to some, but for more difficult drug names, the pronunciation guide is your friend, and always pay attention to where the syllables are divided. It will help you. Our second drug name today is Culipta. Like a lot of brand name drugs, Culipta has only three syllables. The emphasis is on the second syllable, lip, Culipta. There's nothing particularly tricky about pronouncing this drug name. There just aren't many brand or generic drug names that start with the letter Q. Seeing the Q will make you look twice, but you've got this. Let's wrap this up. In today's episode, you learned where to find the intended pronunciations for generic and brand name drugs and how to pronounce Esopiclone and Culipta. 
I plan to publish one episode per month on the topic of drug name pronunciations starting in February. That's right now. I'll give strategies and tips for breaking down generic drug name pronunciations and the many places to find brand name drug pronunciations. They are not in a dictionary organized like generic ones. They're a little harder to find. Some generics may be harder to say, but I do feel like the pronunciations are easier to find. More on that in a future episode. Thank you for joining me for episode 134 of the Pharmacist's Voice podcast. Please visit thepharmacistsvoice.com to read the show notes. You'll find links to the Pharmacy Times article that I mentioned and the breakdowns of Esopiclone and Culipta in those show notes. Join me next week for episode 135. That's an interview with Sue Paul. She's the second pharmacist in my PGX Pharmacists series. One last thing, word of mouth is still a great way to share information. So if you liked this episode, please share it with a friend and subscribe to or follow the Pharmacist Voice podcast in your favorite podcast player to get each new episode delivered to your smartphone every time a new episode comes out. Thank you again for listening. 